Hi, this is Jonas from VSGLWiz.com. In this video, we are going to learn about impure functions in VSGL. In the previous tutorial, we created a function that calculates the number of clock periods in a given number of seconds and minutes. We then used it down in our state machine process to avoid repeating the same calculations over and over again. That's all good, but there's still some repetitive code related to the counter signal. In each of the states, the return value from the new function is compared to the value of the counter signal. And whenever the two are equal, the counter signal is reset inside of the if branches. In other words, there's still room for improvement, and that's good, because then I can show you how to incorporate these actions into a function. To get us started, I'm going to head over to the test bench from the previous tutorial, I'm going to copy off the code into a new file, which I will save as t22 for tutorial number 22, underscore, impure function tb.vhd. We also have to change the entity names to t22 underscore impure function tb. The final change that we are going to do in a test bench is to change the instantiated device under test module from t21 underscore traffic lights to t22 underscore traffic lights. We're not going to make any other changes to the test bench, just like in the previous tutorial, we won't be introducing any functional changes to the traffic lights module, we're only going to simplify the implementation. So let's save this file and head over to the traffic lights module from the previous tutorial. I'm going to copy all of this code to a new file, which I will name t22 underscore traffic lights .vhd. Remember to change the entity names from t21 to t22 underscore traffic lights as well. This will be our starting point for this tutorial. Here, in the declarative region of the architecture, is the countervalve function that we created in the previous tutorial. We're gonna leave this function as is and head down to our process. Then I'll add a few new lines between the process is tag and the begin tag. This space here is the declarative region of the process. Whatever you put in here will only be visible within the scope of this process. We've used this space before to declare variables, but this time we're going to declare a function in here. I'll start by typing the keyword impure followed by function. Let's name this function counter expired. Then inside of parentheses we we'll declare a parameter named minutes of type integer with the default value of zero and another one named seconds of type integer with the default value of zero as well. Basically the same parameters as the regular countervalve function. After I've closed off the parentheses I'll type return boolean is. Then on the next line I'll type the begin keyword to mark the start of the function code and after a few blank lines I will terminate the function using the end function tag. Ok, so now we have declared a new function in our process which has the same minutes and seconds parameters as the old countervalve function. But while the old function returned the number of clock periods as an integer value, this function will return a boolean value. A boolean value can only be either true or false. The return value from this function can be inserted directly into the if statements down in our state machine. Actually, this line here counter equals the return value from counterval produces a boolean value. So how are we going to implement this impure function? Well, first of all we are going to use the counterval function which we already have. In our impure function I'll type if counter equals counterval. Inside of the parentheses we'll simply pass on the minutes and seconds parameters. Then if this evaluates to true, if the counter signal equals the calculated number of clock periods in minutes and seconds, we're gonna reset the signal by assigning 0 to it. And on the next line we're gonna return true. If the counter signal has any other value we're going to do nothing and return false. Then I'll close off this if statement and we're done with this impure function. Ok, so let's just stop here for a moment. What is the deal with the impure keyword? Why are we using it now and not before? In the new function we are assigning a value to the counter signal, but the counter signal is not on the parameter list. I told you in the previous tutorial that you cannot do this. Well, you can't if the function is pure and functions are pure by default. A pure function is not allowed to have side effects. What that means is that it's not allowed to read or change any external signals. So that if you call it with the same parameter values, it will always yield the same return value. On the other hand, when you use the impure keyword, you waive this part of the contract. The function is allowed to have side effects, like reading or changing any signal that's within its scope. This is also the reason why we declared the impure function within the process and not in the architecture. If it had been declared in the architecture, it wouldn't have been allowed to change the counter signal. It wouldn't have compiled. 
it will have been allowed to read the counter signal, but not to change it. Okay, so the next thing we are going to do is to replace the function calls to countervalue with calls to our new impure function counter expired. We'll start in the first state by selecting the counter equals countervalue and replacing it with a call to our new counter expired function. The parameters in the new function are the same, so we'll leave that. On the next line is the counter gets the value 0, which is now performed by the counter expired function, so we'll go ahead and delete this line. Now that we're done with the first state, I'll do the same replacing and deleting in the code for all of the other states as well. Ok, all good, let's try to simulate the design to see if the module still behaves as intended. I'm adding the two new files to our ModelSim project, compiling, starting the simulation and adding the signals to the waveform. Then, like before, I'm typing run 5 min, which gives me 5 minutes of simulation time. After we zoom out, we can see that the pattern still looks like it used to, with the north and west states having the longest durations. Let's add another cursor to measure the exact duration of the north state. I'm using the find next transition button to place the cursors exactly on the transitions. We're gonna have to zoom in a bit. And we can see that the time between the state changes is 60 seconds, which is correct. And the duration of the shorter state is 5 seconds, which is also correct. The behavior of the module hasn't changed at all, which is what we wanted. Now instead of having a lot of repetitive calculations in the state machine code, we have put them into functions. The state machine code is a bit shorter and easier to read. At least in my mind, if counter expired 5 seconds tells me more than the code we started with. You may find that some developers dislike the use of impure functions because they obscure where the signal assignments happen and which signals are being read within the function. If you go all crazy with impure functions and take it too far, I would have to agree with them. But when used correctly, impure functions can make code less obscure. It's all about how you use them. Don't put too much logic in them and give the function a descriptive name. That will make it easier to read the code like an algorithm. Just don't overdo it. That's all I had for you in this video about impure functions in VSGL. Thank you for watching and check out vsglwist.com for more tutorials and blog posts.